All right. Um, so first off, uh, we we're going to see this first review from 3.1. We, we just did a huge review over 3.1. Um, that said, when you look at this, you should know this. And if you're not super fast at it yet, that's okay. Um, but at a certain point, you should be able to look at this and say, um, left five, down six, reflected across the X axis, reflected across the Y axis, and stretch by factor of four. Vertical stretch. Try to add the vertical part, but if you don't, it's okay. So, now, very obviously, you can see that part because now we're going backwards. So, before, I gave you a formula, I gave you an equation, and you had to tell me which way you moved it, left, right, up, down. Well, now, I'm not telling you the formula. I'm telling you you're moving it up, down, left, right, and I want to know what the formula is. Start by giving you your difficulty. X squared and it's moved left four and up ten. Now, uh, so look at this where you say, okay, well, left and right is the H, up and down is the K. You totally can. I'm hoping by now you don't have to, but again, I mean, you'll get that cheat sheet on the test. So if you need that, that's fine. Um, but left four is in the parentheses. And remember, it's the opposite of the C's. Four is actually plus four. Now remember, don't forget, this is a very the most common thing. A lot of people forget to put the square. So it is x squared, that's a parent function, so you put parentheses. Up 10 just means plus 10 at the end, that's all you need. Now, preferably on my answer key, I put y is equal to or f of x is equal to, um, but honestly, if you have this part on a test, I'm going to give you credit for that. Don't forget that little square, though. That is not what I had to think about until so. um, Do you have the only difference is it's x to the third? So maybe, um, I know some students that do this, they start out by putting their parentheses and put to the third. Just keep in mind, you might not use the parentheses. Um, and we're talking about that in this one right here. It is stretched by a factor of three. So by a factor of three means that three is on the outside. We don't go left or right any, so we don't have anything in the parentheses. So if you want to start like that, you can. Some of you guys can skip that. Um, but ultimately, this answer is going to look like 3x to the third. If you have 3x to the third, uh, that's fine. That's a really kind of weird way to put it, but we're all kind of really weird people in our own rights. The next one, the absolute value is reflected across the x-axis, so it's the absolute value of x. Left and right at all, so there's nothing inside that absolute value. Uh, we're reflecting across the x-axis, which is just different. And number nine is a square root. It's reflected across the y-axis. So this one is... Um, the square root of x and across the y-axis is inside. Now, again, you won't have that very often, but notice that I didn't have anything else with that. Most personally, do that, it's like that where it's kind of just inside. Also, it helps at all. Most of the time, I do a reflection across the y-axis. I usually do it with the square root um, because the quadratic, the x squared or uh, absolute value, if you reflect across the y, it doesn't actually change the uh, what the fuck you're at. Um, information you don't necessarily need to know, um, but usually, usually it's with a square root. Um, if you want to do number 11 and 12 on your own, I have time to do that. I might just have to cut you short a little bit. Um, and these are only one step. I don't know. I mean, the worksheet, I'm sure, goes into some that are two or three steps. Um, but again, it's no different than what we did before. So go ahead and do those on your own, and then we will... Answers are up there. Um, the first one is two thirds square of x. Uh, the next one is x minus six to the third minus eight. Again, don't forget that third. The square to the third is the one a lot of people miss that little detail. They just put the parentheses. Um, now, again, um, I probably should have done one that was more than just two steps. One that was like um, a vertical compression and moving a left and going up 10 or something. Um, but again, I think you guys can probably piece that together, especially if you're solid with that 3.1 material we just did. 
Now, the next thing we're talking about is when we just have one single point, one ordered pair, that we're going to do the transformations to. Up, down, up, right, stretches and presses, and flexes. Just one single ordered pair. Now, I promise you will, uh, we will use this in a later assignment when um, it's going to come in more handy, where you're going to be able to do a, uh, a graph that you don't know what it is, like you don't know a quadratic uh, or a quadratic, you know is a, um, a parabola. Um, you know the parent function of an absolute value. You know all those parent functions. This is going to help you if you have a graph that's not one of those parent functions. So, step, and this is where it's a little bit hard. Uh, the first step is you're going to ignore your ordered pair. You're going to ignore this table, and you're going to find the transformation. So, you're going to write the transformation up three, left four, or something like that. Then you're going to use that up three, left four. Now you're going to forget about your um, your equation, your function, um, and now you're going to look at your ordered pair and use this table to move that. That cheat sheet for your test. Remember, um, the cheat sheet I printed off to you, there's that dotted line that said, um, you're going to get the top half on the test, but not the bottom half. It's because the bottom half, I took that off so I could put this table on there. So, this one says, for each listed below, we're going to move the point negative 4, 6. Negative 4, 6 is the one we're going to do. So, number 12, we have f, f of x plus 2 and minus 2. Don't worry about your ordered pair. Don't worry about that table. What is the transformation that we did from yesterday from 3.1? Well, plus 2 is left 2. Step one, just function anymore. Our table and do those instructions. So left, we are adding or subtracting a number uh, to our x or y value. Now, before I said the in parentheses, if you go left and right, it's like it's opposite. That's where when you're looking at the equation. Once you have that it's left two, then you just take x minus whatever that number is. So the left two, you're going to take the x value of your coordinate, you're going to subtract two from it. Um, you're adding and subtracting things from your y value. And that makes sense if you think about it, because the x value is going left and right. So if I say the order of pairs is negative four, six, you go to left four. So if you subtract two from it, you go two more in that next direction. Same thing with up and down. If you go up six, and then I'm going down three from there, I just take three away from that, up six. So that's why we're adding it and subtracting it to the x value for left and right. Should say up and down, and let's copy and paste from. Uh, sorry, this should say up and down. So make sure you're correct that. Did on me. So if it's plus something, you go either add it to your y. If it's minus, you subtract it from your y. But it's worth. I still needed this when I used my answer key. When I did my answer key, I pulled this up just to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. So again, the way I do this is I have my negative four, six. If two, that means you subtract two from your X. If it is minus three, you're subtracting three from the Y. So my new ordered pair is negative six. My six minus three is positive three. Six positive three is my new order pair. So if I take that old order pair, four six, and I move that left two and down three. But again, it's important to realize that the only thing we use this equation for, this function, was to get the instructions. Once we have the instructions, we forget about that function altogether. We just use our table. a minus x inside your parentheses, so it's inside your parentheses, that's a y-axis reflection. Minus 1 is down 1. And we have um, negative 4, 6 is where we're starting. If it's reflected across the y-axis, again, if you look at your table, a y-axis reflection is we make the x into its opposite. It's a negative x. So negative 4 turns to positive 4. And the y value, um, now again, we go down one, so that you're subtracting one from your y value. So that's four, five. Let's follow that table. I mean, I have one that takes multiple steps. Um, the other 
thing, I try as much as I can. Later on, I might do something a little bit differently, but for this stuff, it's just an ordered pair. I try as much as I can to go in the correct, uh, I guess I should say, to make them where if you go in a different order, you still get the same answer. Um, so for these, uh, for our purposes, I'm going to make sure the order doesn't matter at all. And if I mess that up, and if you're like Mr. Seth and I did it in the order, got a different answer, let me know. We can look at it, and I appreciate that. The next one is one third, and it's a compression. So it's a compression by one third. Now, the thing I like about a stretcher compression, and it doesn't actually matter what one it is, you're multiplying it to your y value. So whether it is multiplying it by a fraction or multiplying it by a three or a four, whatever it is you're multiplying. So if it's a stretch, that number is bigger than one. Okay, apply it. So this one is negative four, six, and I multiply that six by one third. So I end up getting negative four, uh, six times one third is two. Use your calculator if you need to. Don't necessarily have time today to go over how to multiply fractions. Uh, again, you guys have calculators with those buttons in there. One. Fifteen. Anyway, uh, the minus in front is reflected across the x-axis. It's to the right five, and the plus four is up four. I will tell you that when I tell you to actually answer, if I tell you list that, if that's the answer I'm looking for, then I would like you to say reflection across the x axis, right five, up four, and write it out. But this one, that's not my answer. I'm not looking for that. So if you want to do a shorthand, that's fine. As long as if I were you, I would put something. Because a lot of students that skip this step and they don't list it out, they miss little minus signs and adding things and multiplying their own thing and stuff like that. So I would take the time to do that. So we have our ordered pair is the negative four six. I need some more. But if it's a reflection across the x axis, going on with it, I'm going to make each step a different, each um, translation or uh, transformation, I'm going to make a new step. So if it is across the x axis, that is this one. So I make my y value into its opposite. Um, so this reflection across the x axis makes it negative four, negative six. Then five, again, if you go up and check, hopefully you know it by now, but that means you add five to your X. Positive one, negative six. Four, and if you check, that means we add four to this value, so that is one, negative two. Fully aware, some of you guys can combine some of those steps. Uh, that is, I will always do, or I will caution you to that um, because I don't want to make sure you um, miss anything or make any little mistakes. And honestly, I probably should say the order this year. I'm going to not worry about that right now with graphing. Maybe we'll get into a little bit more. Um, By factor three, nine. So to the left again. If you need, to, if you need a little graph, you can go to that table. Two to the left means we're subtracting two from your x value. So negative six six. And the stretch by factor of three is multiplying your y by that three. And again. To compress, it doesn't matter. It's always the y value. That's again, that's why I really like that. So multiply that by three is negative six and eighteen. And up nine is um, we add nine to the eighteen, so that's negative six and twenty-seven. Kind of a crazy ordered pair, but that's okay.
Oh, and then I get into why is this helpful? Again, if we know parabola, then it's pretty nice where we can move things up down left, right? We'll talk about that. Um, but if we don't know that it's a parabola, if you look at every single ordered pair and you do this transformation we just talked about with every single ordered pair, that means you move every point up to the left or whatever under your parabola. So that's the reason again, I'm showing shortcuts using the parent function. Um, but later on, I think uh, Monday. Um, we'll talk about how to do it if it's not a parent function when you have a graph and you do this where you just move every ordered pair and then you can sketch your new graph. So that's why this is helpful. That's why I know some students get confused at why we're going over this. Um, that's why. Um, if you have time, go ahead and do number 17 and 18. Um, if you're over it and you want to relax, that's fine. Just make sure you don't forget to do your homework check for 3.2. I apologize that I gave you two in one day, um, but one of them I gave you time to do in class, so I hope that helps. Um, and it is a little bit of a result that, again, I apologize because most of you actually did get the other one done, um, but probably 30 people throughout my classes did not do yesterday's.